Hi, Five Day Friends. My name is Alex and I'm Sam's mom. And today we are going to talk about yarn. Yarn starts with what letter? If you said why, you're right. Yarn can be made from all different kinds of materials, from plants to animals to even man-made things like petroleum, which is kind of similar to oil or gasoline. It can also be made from milk and even banana peels. It's pretty crazy. So today though, we're gonna focus on fibers or yarn that's made from animals. Um, last week, Miss Megan brought you a fiber box. Um, so I want you to go ahead and open your fiber box and we're gonna go through all the different materials that are in your box, kind of looks like this. So the first thing that you'll notice is this big wooden tool that has some nails in the top of it. Um, this is called a French knitter. Uh, this is a tool that you'll be using in another video um, to create a knitted fabric. So I'll show you how to do that in another video. So just go ahead and set this aside now. Um, you'll also notice in your box that there are a bunch of different kinds of fibers and you also had a yarn cake in there. We're going to use a little bit of our yarn cake today, but mostly we're going to be talking about all of these different fibers, um, which are a lot of fun to touch. So everything in this box has come from um, either an animal or even an insect, like this silk here. Um, we're going to start with this wool here. This comes from a sheep. Um, and so I want you to go ahead and get your curly cues out this part. Um, the wool that's in your box comes from a Cordell sheep. And let me show you what a Cordell sheep looks like. They're pretty cute. So sheep, just like people, um, need to get their hair cut. We get our hair cut. Sheep also get their hair cut. So um, every year, sheep shearers come to sheep farms and they cut the sheep's hair off and that is what you have in your box. And it doesn't hurt the sheep, it's just like when we get a haircut. Um, they just use um, some clippers. So some of you may have had like a buzz cut before where your hair gets clipped. Um, that's what they're using to shear the sheep and you'll see this guy, oops, over here, that one already has all of his hair cut, and this one is in the process of getting its hair cut. Now, um, it's really important that sheep do get haircuts because if they don't, what can happen is they get way too big sheep, sheep uh, wool coats on, and then it makes it really hard for them to walk around and to see. This sheep here, this one's name is Shrek, and Shrek escaped from his farm, and um, he was gone for six years, and when they found him, this is what he looked like, and he really needs a haircut. Um, the weight of the wool is really, really heavy, so it's not good for sheep to not get sheared. All right, so if you look at your curly cues, um, these have come off the sheep, and I have washed them but you'll still notice that there is some kind of, we call it VM, it's vegetable matter. So sometimes you'll see like little seeds in here, um, little specks of dirt, um, sometimes twigs, all of that can be in your sheep fiber. So what we use is, it's called a flick comb, and we flick this and get try and get as much of this vegetable matter out, and then we use these finer combs here and you'll see it has some fiber left from when I was combing before and what you do is you put these curly cues you attach them in here like this Do some more so I'm sticking them in my comb and then I use my paddles I have two and I start pulling oh it's so hard to do and start pulling them apart. And you see as I do that, it's making it super fluffy. So I keep pulling and keep pulling and keep pulling and then I end up, I take it off and then turn it over and stick it back on there because we want to get this super smooth and all stretched out. 
Oof, and it really is hard. I wish I was in the classroom so I could show you so you guys could try this at home because it's you have to be super strong to do this. Oof. And so when I do this, what I'm left with at the end of it is this other piece of fiber that you have in your box, which is this. And we call this a roll log. So when the wool comes off the sheep, it's not in uh, a form that we can use to create yarn with. So then that's why we use the combs. And we take it off the combs like this. And then we roll it up to create your roll log. So go ahead and feel your two, um, your two kinds of wool in your box. So you'll see this one has all these curls and look through it and see if you can find any of that vegetable matter, any sticks or twigs or anything. And then touch your other wool, the one that's been combed. And it feels kind of like a cotton ball. So once we have our combed wool like this, what we can then do is use a spinning wheel. And I'll um, send you a little video of me um, using my spinning wheel. And you pull this out like this, and you have your spinning wheel, and the spinning wheel helps to twist the wool up. And with these twists, you can end up making yarn. So if you wanted to try pulling and twisting, that's how you start to make your yarn. So again, these are all um, from a sheep. The sheep gets sheared, and that's how we have this, this um, wool. So um, this is the natural color that came off of the sheep, but you can also dye the wool. And you can dye it either um, before you end up spinning it or before you, um, before you flick it like this, or you can dye it after you flick it, like the red yarn that you're gonna find in your box. Or you can dye it once it's been spun into yarn. So all of the yarn that is in your boxes is yarn that I dyed. I tried to make it um, super colorful to help you with your French knitting tool to make it easier to see your um, knit stitches. Okay, um, so again, this is the natural wool color. We don't really have blue sheep, so this one I dyed um, this blue color. Next, what I would like for you to touch in your box. Oh, so, um, sorry, this one came from a Cordell sheep. This red one came from a Merino sheep. A Merino sheep is the softest kind of wool that you can get. So just like there are all different kinds of dogs, there are all different kinds of sheep. And I wanted to show you some pictures um, so again, that was the Coradale sheep. So that's the curly cues that you have. And these are the Merino sheep. How are these Merino sheep different from the Coradale sheep? You see something on their head? The Merino sheep? that the Coradale sheep don't have? What about their necks? Do their necks look different? So just like there are all different kinds of dogs, there are all different kinds of sheep. And this guy has some super big horns. And this one looks funny because this guy looks like he is smiling at you. And these ones, these might be the cutest sheep, I think. With their curls and they're so fuzzy. And this guy looks kind of like a rabbit. Look at that face. And those ears. 
So sheep are the most common form of fiber that you're going to find um, out there. Uh, but in your box, we also have some other kinds of fiber. So why don't you go ahead and get out your alpaca. Alpaca starts with an A. Alpaca fiber is super, super soft. So if you touch your Coradale sheep fiber and then your alpaca fiber, I think you'll notice that the alpaca fiber is much softer than your Coradale sheep fiber. And just like the sheep need haircuts, the alpaca need haircuts too. Let me show you what alpacas look like. Look at those guys looking at you. They're really cute. So a lot of the um, farms that are local to us will carry or, or keep alpaca on their farms. Um, and they use the fiber, they shave shave the animal, give the animal a haircut, and then we use the fiber to make wool. And it's the same, same process. So I would put this fiber in my combs, comb it out, turn it into that roll log, and then use that to pull out and then twist into yarn. Okay, another really super soft fiber in your box is this, oops, it's kind of hard to see with that light, Angora Rabbit. So this Angora Rabbit fiber, you'll notice is even softer, even fluffier than the alpaca. And you'll also see that the fiber, the, the length of the hairs is longer than the alpaca and longer than the sheep. And let me show you what this bunny looks like. <coughs> Look how fluffy that guy is. So um, these Angora rabbits, they don't get shaved. Instead, their owners will take a brush and brush their hair. And just like when you brush your hair, you have little hairs that come out. These rabbits have hairs that come out. And then we take those fibers here and again, spin and twist them into yarn. Okay. And the last fiber that you have in your box is the strongest fiber that is in, in your box. And that is silk. So with um, the wool and with the alpaca and with the angora, if I wanted to just take a length of yarn and break it, I can. But with silk, I'm not able to just break the yarn because the fiber strength is very, very strong. So you'll notice that the silk is a lot shinier than the other fibers in your box. The silk is also really, really smooth. So the reason why silk is so strong is because the fiber length is really, really long. The length of each of the, the uh, fibers that make up the silk yarn. And the silk comes from not an animal, but can anybody guess? It's not an animal. It's not a vegetable. It is a silkworm. And the silkworms spin a cocoon. I think you guys know what cocoons are from um, doing your butterfly lesson last year. I don't know if you got to your butterfly lesson this year. Um, but they spin a cocoon, creating, oh, that's cotton, creating all of the, where did my silkworm go? Creating all of these fibers. And these are all of their cocoons. And then they take these cocoons and they unwind the fiber so it's fewer to separate out just one little strand from your silk. Let's see, it's so hard to see. But it's, you can kind of see it there. It's kind of shiny. But so that's one 
strand from unwinding that cocoon. It's thinner than your hair. Let me show you what the silk caterpillars turn into. They turn into this really pretty moth. So um, as I said before, you can also have um, or get fiber from um, not just animals, not just insects, um, but also things like trees can get turned into fiber. Um, cotton, a lot of our clothes are made out of cotton. Cotton can get turned into fiber, which is then turned into like this cotton yarn. Um, milk can get turned into yarn, which is kind of crazy. Um, and I said banana peels before too. Um, can you guys think of what might be the absolute strongest fiber? So we know silk is really strong and it comes from an insect. There's another fiber in um, the world that comes from an insect that is the strongest fiber on the planet. It's even stronger than steel, five times stronger than steel. And it starts with the letter S. <coughs> All right, did you guys guess? I want you to shout it at the screen and we'll see if you're right. Let's see, what is it? A spider web. Could you believe that this is the strongest material on the earth? That's crazy. So next time you walk through a spider web, just think about how strong that spider web is. So talking about strength of your yarn, um, so fiber is one part of how strong your yarn is, um, the type of material used to make it. But the other part of how strong your yarn is, is the twist and how many twists are wrapped around each other, and that's called ply. So I've given you two pieces of this red um, merino wool fiber in your box, and I want you to do a little experiment. So with this first piece here, I want you to try and pull it apart. Do you see how easily it pulls apart? Let me just pull. It easily comes apart. Now with the other piece, what I want you to do is before you just pull it apart, I want you and your um, caregiver might have to help you do this, but you're going to just twist it up so that it's twisted and now try and pull. And look, I can't pull that fiber apart. So even just putting one little simple twist into this fiber makes it stronger. So um, the way that we create really strong fiber, um, just like uh, the way that we create suspension bridges or cables that are very strong, is we take multiple strands of yarn that's twisted up and wrap them around each other. And again, that's called plies. So for each strand of yarn that makes up a larger um, strand of yarn, each one of those is called a ply. So what I want you to do now is to grab that cake of yarn. Um, yours again is multicolored. This one is blue. Um, and I want you to see how many plies your yarn has. So when I pull on this, it's pretty strong. And if I untwist it, I'm untwisting it and you can start to see the plies, the number of strands of yarn that make it up come apart. And I want you to count each one of those strands. So here in mine, mine is made up of three strands. How many is yours made up of? Did you look and count and see that there are four strands that make up your yarn? Yep, so each of these extra strands of yarn, when we twist them all together, that makes the yarn even stronger. And so that's why when you look at cables that hold up a suspension bridge, there are tons of little tiny cables that make up a bigger cable that make up an even bigger cable. And by twisting all of those together, it makes um, that the final cable very very strong. So again you can try by just pulling the fiber without twisting it. it. Comes apart really easily. 
but if you twist it and then try to pull, it doesn't really come apart. So in our next lesson, we're going to be talking about um, your French knitter and how to use this to make fabric. So fabric is what we use then to make our clothing. Um, and there are two types of fabric that we'll talk about in the next video. Um, just briefly, there's knitted fabric, which is really stretchy, and woven fabric, which is not at all stretchy. But we'll cover that in our next lesson. Um, so look for that video. It should be coming soon. And we really miss you guys. Sam is really missing all of his five-day friends. Um, and hopefully we'll get to see you this summer at our picnic.